So now let's get two views on what this turmoil means for U.S. foreign policy with Wendy Sherman, who held a number of senior foreign policy positions in both the Obama and the Clinton administrations. She's now director of the Center for Public Leadership at Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government. And Michael Duran, he was senior director on the National Security Council staff, focusing on the Middle East during the George W. Bush administration. He also served in the Departments of State and Defense. He's now a senior fellow at the Hudson Institute, a conservative Washington think tank. And welcome to the news hour to both of you. I want to ask both of you, and Wendy, I'll start with you. What was your reaction when you heard this, and what is the reaction you're hearing from others? The reaction uh, initially was not really a great deal of surprise, maybe on the timing, but not the fact of John Bolton's departure. I think many of us thought this was going to be coming down the road at one time or another, and I think a few weeks ago many of us thought it was going to happen then. Uh, as I've said before, John Bolton never saw a war he didn't want to wage. President Trump uh, wanted to get Americans out of conflict, wanted to take Americans out of Afghanistan, out of the Middle East didn't want to go to war, wanted to negotiate directly at high levels with leaders of countries, and John Bolton had a different approach. On the other hand, as both Nick and Yamish pointed out, uh, Bolton in some ways provided guardrails for the president. He couldn't just go his merry way. Uh, but in both cases, both in the case of President Trump and of John Bolton, process is not what's important here. Uh, each of these are very strong men who believe their point of view and their way forward is the right way forward. One, however, happens to be the president of the United States, and he does get to decide. And Michael Duran, uh, what was your reaction, and what are you hearing from other people you talked to today? Uh, my reaction was a little different. It was a, a combination of um, a little bit of disappointment, but then, uh, like with uh, Wendy, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't all that surprised. Uh, I was uh, disappointed because uh, I like a lot of John Bolton's uh, policies. Uh, uh, in particular, I like the effect that he's had on the, uh, on the Iran deal. Um, and I tend to agree with him. Uh, but I was always a little bit surprised by the choice of him as national security advisor, because that, that job is really best done by someone who is uh, uh, a master of process rather than, than content. They have to have, obviously understand the content, and they have to have uh, a, a deep awareness, a, a deep knowledge of foreign policy. But the job is a coordinating role, really. You, need, you have to um, bring uh, all of the other principles together from, in the National Security Council, um, uh, make sure that the president understands the views of those principles as those principles want them to be uh, explain, uh, understood, um, and, and then to help the president come to a decision. And uh, as, your, um, as uh, your reporter said, uh, you have to abs uh, implement the president's decision and, and not pursue your own agenda. But it sounds like you're saying, uh, Michael Duran, that you don't think that was John Bolton's strength, coordination, uh, uh, keeping uh, the trains running on time, in effect, at the National Security Council. I exactly. I mean, we all know he's a—I I worked with him when I was in the Bush White House. He's an extremely talented and intelligent person, and he's also a professional. But uh, he's a man with very strong views, and uh, that's, not what, that's not what you look for in a national security advisor, usually. Wendy Sherman, what ultimately do you think is John Bolton's effect on U.S. foreign policy? Where did he make the most difference? I think his effect has been quite disastrous because we don't have a resolution to any of the many problems in front of us. The president, of course, left the Iran nuclear deal, but Iran is now heading back towards uh, getting a nuclear weapon, and we don't have any less uh, state sponsorship of terrorism in the Middle East. We don't have a resolution on Venezuela, even though John Bolton took a very muscular approach toward Venezuela. And the president, I think, quite frankly, just lost interest. We don't have resolution on North Korea. And as we all know, famously, John Bolton got sent to Mongolia in the process of that because of his disagreements with the president. We don't have resolution in the China tariff trade deal. And I'd say the only place where John Bolton's hand is really shown is that he did get the president to withdraw from the INF treaty. That's the treaty with Russia around uh, missiles. And uh, indeed, I think the president didn't much care about that and was glad to let Bolton take the lead.
Michael Duran, you want to react to that? Where, where do you see John Bolton uh, having affected U.S. foreign policy the most? Well, I, I, I don't think that resolution of disputes is the, is the standard we need to look at because the, the United States is, is going to have enemies by virtue of who it is and, uh, um, and what it has done historically. And Iran is an enemy of the United States. Um, that's not because of the United, any, anything that the United States has done. It's because Iran wants to drive the United States from the Middle East. And so Bolton helped the president put together a containment policy of Iran. Uh, a, a policy of competing with Iran, unlike the Obama administration, which basically opened up the doors to the region to let Iran do whatever it wanted. So I, I, I think that Bolton played a very good role there. Do you think Wendy Sherman, uh, it, it, let me put it this way, do you think it will make a, a big difference, uh, Wendy Sherman, that John Bolton is gone? Where do, where, where do you see it making a difference? I think the president will feel that he has a completely free hand now to do whatever he wants to do. We've seen Mick Mulvaney, the chief of staff, take a very different approach to pr previous president, uh, chiefs of staff. By letting Trump simply be Trump, uh, the president wants to make his own decisions. He believes he's his own best advisor. He believes in photo opportunities and flair. He isn't someone who very much likes process. He doesn't want to rely on experts. He doesn't want the deliberative process that Michael has outlined. So I think we will see the president uh, have a more engagements with leaders at high levels, try to take some creative approaches to various issues of concern. But those approaches aren't going to get us an outcome that protects American national security because they won't be well prepared. There won't be a deliberative process. He won't rely on the people around him who can bring history, understanding, expertise, and ideas to the table. And Michael Duran, uh, just quickly, what do you think is going to change? What will be different without John Bolton? I think it's mainly one of tactics. I think that was the, the uh, John Bolton wanted to have a a hard policy against actors like Iran, and he wanted it to be constantly hard in every way. I think the president wants to have start out with a hard policy. He wants to have leverage, but then he wants to have tactical flexibility with how he uh, how he deals with the Iranians, including meeting them you know, perhaps at the at the UN General Assembly. So I, I think we're going to see a lot of more a lot more tactical flexibility, but I'll be surprised if there's a very significant change in the main policies of the government, just because people like Mike Pompeo, uh, who has a very good relationship with the president, doesn't have a worldview that is significantly different than John Bolton's. Michael Duran and Wendy Sherman, thank you both very much. Thank you. Thank you, Judy.